it's recently been brought to my attention that I haven't said anything yet on this channel about who I am or what I am doing with this uh, weekly energy, this format. So I want to talk a little bit about that in case you're watching this for the first time. I am studying Western astrology, primarily, to begin with. And so every week I look at the major transits, the planetary transits, what the moon's doing, what the energy is like astrologically speaking. And then I talk about it here once a week to prepare you for the week ahead. It's like a guiding sort of um, thing, intention. Um, and then we do a tarot card reading immediately afterwards, okay? Just to see what kind of interplay we might see. If it resonates, great. If not, just let it go because it is a collective reading. It's a general reading. So it may apply to your life in some way, shape, or form or to somebody you know in the life of somebody that you know. All right, what week? This is the 23rd through the 29th of January. Just coming off of that new moon energy. New moon, manifestation. I think I have two cards that are reverse. Oh yeah. Nine of Cups. Wish. The Fool. Uranus going direct. Right? Didn't that happen last week? Two weeks ago? Uh, actually, it just happened. Right. Um, that's... This is happening Sunday the 22nd, Uranus goes direct is the exact. Uranus, I think, is the, the planet that represents the Fool in the tarot, that card that just came out, which is about your soul. It's like you at a soul level. Um, and it's also about taking on the first step, taking that first step towards some adventure, a direction in life. And that's what the new moon is really about. I believe it's also the Lunar New Year this weekend when I'm posting this. Uh, let's see what the tarot has to say. Astrology was um, a little light. Um, there's, I mean, there's always stuff going on, uh, but some of the themes for this week we could be working with is adventure, feeling confident, making travel plans. Um, this is, there's a lucky feeling this week, a lucky feeling and a search for something transcendental transcendental tenderness love for all things painful or repeated themes of misplaced love so if you are pursuing love what is that what does your pursuit say about who you are where you're at how is your self-love reflected in your search for love Mm -hmm. All right, let's just pull some cards. It's the sunset. I'm at a different spot. This is Kido's. It's not on any of the Googles. You can't find it. You just got to be here. It's a beautiful cliffside spot. The card underneath is death, transformation, Scorpio energy, intensity and depth. Three of Pentacles, Collaboration, Four of Swords, uh, Ace of Cups. I see, just, oh, hold on, I'll finish. The Chariot, the Hierophant, the Six of Cups, the Knight of Swords, the Knight of Pentacles, and the Lovers. Wow. This is an interesting spread because right away I'm getting that there's like a um, a collaboration or a situation a, a, within a community or with a person or with a, a group of people. Three of three of pentacles, so we'll so we say third party situation, but that could mean any number of things. And uh, oh, the cars are showing up for the uh, sunset. It's really nice out here. So leaving something like that behind to reflect on your self-worth, self-worth here. I say self-worth because this card, the Three of Pentacles is also a card of um, knowing that you are valuable as you are. And you, 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 you walk into a collaboration, understanding that everybody, everything, and good ideas can come from anywhere. Like that's the sort of feeling of the Three of Pentacles. 
it's in the reverse. So maybe we're walking away from that, taking some more time for self-reflection. That's what this weekend was about for love, self-love. Fill your cup before you can fill the cup of others. The chariot, which is the card of the year, the higher font representing, you know, tradition or, you know, and then I see the six of cups, which is um, nostalgia. And we, we, I think of tradition and nostalgia together. I think about, uh, if we're talking about love, especially the institution of marriage. And I think that some people, many people still follow that narrative. They use that narrative that's for them, but in some other ways, um, it's maybe not for you. There's like this willpower to break through, do something not by the book. How do you show tenderness? How do you show vulnerability? How do you show love in non-traditional ways? That's what we're breaking through into. Um, this is a message I've been getting a lot too, is like, just be more playful. There's a playfulness this week or in like an innocence or something like that. I mean, that's probably just vulnerability working because like there's transformation happening. So there are sore spots, there are tender spots, right? Um, so yeah, there's Taurus, Scorpio. Oh, Taurus, Scorpio, that's the nodal axis. Um, it's, these are the two energies. These zodiacs are the energies um, working with the uh, karma points of the moon. How do we seek security? How do we seek stability? You know, and life is transforming at the same time, this chariot card. This is about, again, about collaboration. His willpower gets these two to work together to push the card. So it will happen on its own time. It's like, you know, you ever met a cat? The cats will do things when they're ready, when they're done and good and ready. Okay, so something is like percolating and it's, um, let's say innovative, inventive. That's actually Aquarius energy working, right? We just, we're, we're officially in Aquarius season. So this is making a lot of sense. And then this final line here, we have the opposition of these two knights the Knight of Swords and the Knight of Pentacles. Both of these have been showing up a lot. This is like laying the foundation, doing things step by step. This is jumping in. This is just jumping right in. So I don't know if they're at, if they're at odds, more so that there wants to be a harmony and a balance to it. A balancing of the masculine and the feminine. Um, I did see that somewhere. That was in the astrology. If I'll just move my... I think I know what it's from, but... I see. Okay, if, it, if the moon has a square with the sun, you have a sun square moon in your chart? I do. It's not... It's interesting. I love digging into my chart more. There's always something to read up on. There's that it's a beautiful sunset. Yeah, man. Uh, so yeah, it sounds like... <laughs> This feels very new moon in Aquarius, like what a, a new moon ritual might look like. It's like taking some time out, working on your own capacity for love, wherever you're at with that, whether you're um, pursuing, seeking, looking, not looking, um, inquiring with others and with yourself. This, this more so feels like a self-love kind of thing. Absolutely. Um, seeking something non-traditional, uh, but still has like this good nostalgic feeling, this uh, desire for a simpler time or for a, yeah, I guess innocence. I'll, re I'll go back to that word of innocence because that's really what it feels like. 
when we embody, when we have innocence, and I see these two cards together, it's like when, when we're young, we believe that anything can happen. You can break through anything. The world is yours, right? You can become anything you want to become. So seeing this in the middle sort of reminds me of like, but there's an established rules. There have been rules that have been established for us before we even got here. And then we live our life in that society by those rules until they change. And then they change and we start doing things not by the book and something, um, yeah, maybe a more spontaneous, sp not just spontaneous, spontaneous and diligent at the same time. So it could be that maybe this is luck. This is what luck looks like. At the right place, at the right time, being prepared, having set down a foundation to take advantage of an opportunity. This is resonating like last week's, um, like last week's video too, a little bit. Oh yeah, and so there's Gemini as well. Those are the four zodiacs. Scorpio, Taurus, Cancer, and Gemini. Let's do really quickly a few cards for each of those. Because I know all of those signs, or there's people close to me who are all of those signs. So this is for you guys. You're watching. Scorpio. Libra, the hangman. Or Justice, the hangman. Page of Swords. Yeah, um, so Scorpio, it's, uh, Justice is again the karma card, so karma is another theme here, but you've laid the foundation, like what you put into something is going to come, is coming back around, and it's more of like getting your mindset around um, the fact that you're prepared and you've got this, because the Page of Swords is the energy that deals with the tower. So this transformation or this change, this time out you're taking to like go in some new um, non-traditional direction with, with 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 love or work like whatever it is you are prepared you are prepared for it i saw the page of pentacles see he's coming out a lot this was the energy underneath on last week's video let's look at chariot cancer already i got three cards uh nine of wands seven of swords and the ten of wands Uh, yeah, Cancer, I feel like there's there's still quite a few challenges and I mean your lesson might be to start delegating some things um, because if, um, if you need help, literally, look, transitioning, transforming, moving beyond like a um, known cycle or a pattern, it's time to ask for help. That's Cancer. Let's look at, whoop, <laughs> the Hierophant which is Taurus. I've got the Empress, which is Taurus. That's about nurturing, right? We did talk about how self-love, nurturing energy, that higher font, also the em <laughs> talking about like non-traditional relationships, the Empress in reverse is kind of smothering energy, a little bit smothering. Two more for the higher font, for Taurus, please. Taurus mother, my mom's a Taurus. Taurus mother, the empress is the mother. You know what, I'm just, no cards are coming out. So I think that's just my uh, mom shout out. Hey mom, you showed up in this reading as the em the Taurus mother. Uh, let's go to the lovers, which is Gemini. I see there's a lot of people here coming for the sunset. It's nice, it's nice. Gemini. Oh, the Hermit and, there we go. The Hermit, the Fool, and the Ten of Swords. Hmm. 
I really don't know what to think of this. I feel like Gemini's got me up in my head a little bit. There's a lot of air here and then we have the hermit. This is a challenge. What do you guys think? I don't know what I'm sensing. The hermit, the, the fool. There's definitely some new beginning, but it only comes after you, you know, you gotta like unearth some, some, some sort of skill or something that you have. Um, that's a part of you. Because I, when I think of the hermit, I think of expression um, so, sometimes because if you keep, if, if you, if you discover gifts in hermit mode and then you never come out of hermit mode, those gifts, those teachings, they will never be seen or known. You gotta like take a risk and come out into that. I don't, you know, I don't know what this could be about, but then we have like this beautiful new beginning that feels really good. This showed up in the last reading too. This was about like doing something else because it's not this. Remember that feeling that, yeah. So yeah, Gemini, doing something else maybe. Or there's more gifts, there's just more to on earth that maybe, you know, when you embody, it'll help you with some, with a problem you've had for a long time. This could also be, this is very mental, you know, maybe that's why my brain feels funny right now doing that. All right. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next week on another Energy Weekly. Uh, don't forget to check out the recommended listening in the description box below. If you like to jam out. If you like to jam out. Bonus content. It's my sugar. <laughs>